We present Barnabas by John Nevinson, read by Jim Newbury. Just before nine o'clock, the green carpet van pulled into Curlew Place and stopped at the far end of the cul-de-sac of smart bungalows. Alex, arming himself with a clipboard, jumped down from the driver's seat while Robbie walked round behind the vehicle to open the back doors. A white-haired woman opened the door and waved to the fitters. Mrs Tyson, grinned Alex, walking up the path. You boys are very punctual, smiled Mrs Tyson. It's a straightforward job, love. Should be away mid-morning. It's the living room, the woman said, ushering him through the front door and down a short hall. Alex looked into the room and was pleased to see it was empty, apart from a large, floral-patterned, three-seater settee. My grandson put everything else in the bedrooms for me yesterday, but he couldn't manage the couch, Mrs Tyson said. It took the furniture men an hour to get it into the house three years ago, so... It's fine, Mrs, said Robbie, coming up the hall behind them. It's easy for us to shift the settee to the other end of the room. Some rooms... Everything is left in there for us to move, interrupted Alex. Even footstools and stereo speakers. This is such a big help for us, love. The men turned towards the front door to go out to the van for the fitting equipment. They carried the stuff back into the house and were heading back for the underlay and carpet when Mrs Tyson called out, I'm sure you'd like a cuppa before you start. Oh, aye, laughed Robbie. Just don't tell our boss that we started the job with a brew. Well, there'll be one at the end of the job too, with homemade cake if you can manage it, she said. Manage it? Ha! guffawed Alex, poking the front of Robbie's corpulent shirt. I think he'll struggle through it. Five minutes later, the big rolls of carpet were lying in the hall and the two men were leaning against the kitchen worktops with mugs of tea, while Mrs Tyson sat at a tiny kitchen table on which lay a newspaper and a near-completed crossword. I like Sudoku, said Robbie, nodding at the black and white grid. It's Alex who does the crosswords. I'm stuck on eight down, Mrs Tyson said. Five letters. Clue, Ilex. Alex pulled his spectacles from his pocket and squinted at the paper. It's Holly, he said confidently. Real name for Holly is Ilex. <laughs> he's in a pub quiz team and has an allotment, so that's why he's so brilliant, laughed Robbie. Mrs Tyson filled in the answer and looked across the room. If I'm stuck, I usually talk to Barnabas and sound him out, she smiled. The carpet fitters looked at an old metal cage. A beautiful green and blue budgerigar was preening itself and chattering away in front of a tiny mirror. Barney is usually in the living room when I have my feet up on the sofa. Talking of living room, we'd better get started, interrupted Alex. And the men put their empty mugs on the sink and moved off to do the job. Mrs Tyson left them to it, and the next 90 minutes were spent fitting the carpet. Robbie and Alex knocked on the kitchen door, and Mrs Tyson followed them to the living room, where she oohed and ahed over the new carpet. She ushered them back through the kitchen into the sunny garden, and sat them at a big oak table. Scones! I haven't been wasting my time while you've been beavering away, she smiled putting half a dozen generously sized warm scones and a pot of homemade raspberry jam on the table. I'll leave you boys to it. I'll just take a few things back into the living room, the, the footstool, the CD racks, newspaper holder. Mind if I smoke? asked Robbie. Not if it's outside, that's fine, she called over her shoulder as she entered the house. Lovely garden, mused Alex. Look at the blossom on that apple tree. She'll have a good crop in the summer. Robbie was frisking his pockets, then shrugged his shoulders. Thought I had my fags, he hissed. Do you good to cut back, mocked Alex. Just tuck into them scones. The men made short work of the scones, collected the plates and delivered them to the beaming Mrs Tyson in the kitchen. They wandered into the living room, which now had had a few items returned and collected their tools. Oh, flaming hell, swore Alex. What? 
Robbie looked at the door in case the sensitive ears of the householder had picked up the expletive from the kitchen. "'You're bloody fags, that's what!' hissed Alex. He pointed to a small bump under the carpet towards the window. "'I don't remember dropping them," Robbie protested. "'What are you flaming well did?' said his partner. "'Anyway, what the old girl doesn't know won't hurt her.' Alex strode to the window and stamped once or twice firmly on the little mound before stooping to pat it gently. You'd never know, smiled Robbie. The door opened and Mrs Tyson came in, smiling. It's a lovely job you've done, boys. Please take this tenner and get yourselves a drink tonight after work. As the men protested that the treat of the delicious scones had been more than sufficient, they saw Mrs Tyson's face fall as she gasped. Oh, no! And they followed her tearful gaze towards the bay window in the empty birdcage. You don't know where Barnabas could be, do you? She sobbed.